hope you had a great Halloween yesterday. It is now November. Speaking of Halloween, do you like my background? Yeah. It's a burnt down prison. You know where this prison is? It is in Evan prison. Yeah, this prison is in Iran. And the government burned it down. Oh, but it wasn't empty. No. Uh, it had prisoners in it, locked in, as it got burned down. And you may be thinking, oh, man, was that like a mass execution of the worst prisoners of the world? Like the most criminals, the worst criminals? No. They were innocent. Yeah. Their only crime was that they wanted freedom and they were opposed to the Islamic Republic occupying Iran. And don't confuse it with the religion. It has nothing to do with Islam, the religion. It is a terrorist organization, the IRGC terrorists. And this is what they do. So it has been Halloween horror show, not a show. For 43 plus years, this is just one of the latest ones. And now we get to start episode 87, Fumble Podcast. I'm your host, Pejna Maniac. I have a story to share with you. And this podcast won't be too long, but it will be very deep. Some of you may already know this story, but it's story time with Pejna Maniac regarding a personal story regarding this prison circa 1984 are you ready let's do it the year is 1983 i was not born yet my mother though was living in Iran at the time. She's uh, with her mother, my grandmother. They're of a minority religion, the largest minority group in Iran, the Baha'is. And the same RGC terrorists, this government, the Islamic Republic, they don't accept Baha'is. They're not considered natural citizens. They are not to be treated like human beings. Which, by the way, this is not just reserved for Baha'is. This is for anybody who is anti their uh, barbaric uh, and dictatorship methods and killing, ways of killing that they do. If you don't accept that, you are against the regime and therefore you're in danger. Now, back to my story. My mom was staying at my grandmother's house at the time. These uh, <clears throat> security comes and takes my mom and my grandmother for a reason unknown and not a legal reason to arrest, but they're considered enemies of the state. Fast forward now, they have taken them in to this prison, Evan prison, my grandmother and my mom. They were sentenced to uh, one year in this prison, okay? Now, at the time, they weren't told that it would be a year. They didn't even know if they'd come out alive. That was done on purpose. It's a psychological tactic they use to break you down. During this time, they use multiple different torture methods on my mom and on my grandmother 
One of their goals is to get my mom and my grandmother to recant, to recant from the religion of Baha'i faith. As all of you know, I'm not really religious. Uh, I was born into this faith, Baha'i faith. They're good people. They want nothing but peace and unity. Um, and they are not vocal uh, as one of the rules of the faith is to not be involved in politics <clears throat> and and not to combat uh, the laws of the land, which at this point and for 40 plus 43 plus years, it has been this uh, dictatorship. Now, some of the ways they got, they tried to get my mom and my grandmother to recant the faith. I will just briefly touch on. One was that they would take a portrait of the son of the prophet of the Baha'i faith. Okay. Uh, they would put that portrait on the chair. And they would tell my mom to sit on that chair with that portrait. My mom would refuse. So they lashed her. They would then tell her to say you're not a Baha'i and say that you don't follow the Baha'i religion any longer. Of course, she refused. They lashed her. They lashed her with a cable. Okay. Uh, a cable maybe about that thick and maybe that long, which is outside the, per the camera angle, but long enough where they can swing with full force. They bring my grandmother in in front of my mom. They take set cable. They make my grandmother put her feet up. And what they proceed to do is tell my mom to recant the faith. And if she doesn't, that they would beat her mom in front of her. And they'd beat her on the feet. Now, one of the most powerful moments in this story for me is the following. My grandmother hears this and she turns to my mother and says, if you turn your back on the faith, you are no longer my daughter. Stay strong. So they try it. They tell my mom, recant the faith. Recant from the Baha'i faith. Of course, my mom reluctantly and faithfully declines. You guessed it, they start beating my grandmother's feet in front of my mom. They do this repeatedly. And this is just one torture method they tried. One of one that had parts to it, but it was multiple. If you, you guys watched last, last week's episode with my guest, Mehrnoush, she talked about her mother and how they tried to uh, torture her and how they would bring a truck up to her with her with bl blindfolds on and they'd stop the car right in front of her but she doesn't see it so they did this repeatedly psychological these are uh, just two small stories of millions and millions that you talk to any Iranian, the diaspora, they will tell you. They either know of someone who's been tortured 
or who's been lost, uh, whose lives were lost, uh, at the end of the day, my mom and my grandmother actually managed to leave this prison after a year alive. This was in 84 that they were released. And I was born in 85. So, by the way, I have an older sister who was three years old when my mother was arrested. She's seven years older than me. So, uh, she was three or four years old. Um, and my my dad had to raise her during that year uh, while she was in prison when she shouldn't have been. Same prison behind me that was burned down recently. Uh, many other people like my mother and Mahrush's mother and, and my grandmother who were in this prison, they lost their lives because of this atrocity, because of this arson by the government on its own people. So now you wonder why I've been sharing endlessly on my Instagram and on my TikTok and on my Twitter. Uh, follow me, by the way. Um, this episode is not really uh, following the regular format of Fumble Podcast. It's, it's just me wanting to sit here and tell you guys uh, why it's so important for people outside of Iran to amplify their voices. People are in the streets. Uh, this revolution, full-blown revolution now, has started all stemming from the morality police killing Mahsa Amini, and that has sparked nationwide protests that now is a revolution and internationally the largest assembly was in berlin of almost a hundred thousand people uh iranians and their supporters the in berlin gathered together in solidarity with the people of iran we need to get this terroristic terrorist organization out Okay. Uh, it will be, it will be a beautiful uh, line to freedom, a beautiful uh, road to freedom, and it'll happen quick. As soon as these guys are condemned, expelled, and they are paid, they have paid for all of the murders and rapes and tortures they have put on uh women uh and men that want to have freedom and everyone there uh, they've been killing it's been a massacre uh over the last almost month and a half a little bit over now of this uh of the people inside of iran uh, storming the streets all types of city all the cities and provinces they're they're, they're involved uh, latest is that they're shooting people dead on. There is plain clothes security guards. There are the Basijis, and then uh, uh, there are a few other security forces that uh, are being paid more. They have raised their salary. They have taken the morality police, and they've paused their duties, normal duties, which is not that much different, but it's – they were – converted them into security forces to now go and try and silence the protests and the, this revolution. It's not going to work. Uh, one of the popular slogans right now is, uh, we are all Mahsa Amini. Another slogan is, you kill one, you, you can kill, your, uh, for every one you kill, you can kill a thousand more. The people are not afraid. They're out in the streets with no weapons. They're unarmed. And these cowards called the government are deadly afraid of them. And that's the point. They know their time is, is coming. Um, they're desperate and they do, they do shit like this. 
to try to silence the crowd. It didn't work. This happened a couple weeks ago. Um, and the pro the only more people are in the streets now. So what can we do outside of Iran to, to help amplify their voices? Share, share, share as much as you can on social media. There are a few uh, petitions out there. <clears throat> One of them, the, the link is in my bio, Amnesty International. Um, follow me on Instagram, on TikTok, wherever you are on social media, Twitter. It's all the same, Pej the Maniac. Um, this episode is going to be, is out right now on uh, my YouTube channel. The, uh, and of course, uh, any podcast platform uh, that you listen to, it'll be available on there as well. Um, share, uh, be the voice, and a free Iran means a free Middle East, and it also means uh, Russia is not as powerful because they're getting uh, training and they're getting weapons, uh, the drones, all of that. They're getting that with the help of the Khamenei, who is the leader the evil leader of Iran, and um, and he's in bed with Putin, so it'll help all of that. It'll it will lead to much much better and more peaceful days for the Middle East. Be their voice. I love you guys. This was meant to be a short episode. I just wanted to talk about my own personal story in relation to this. And many of you have been asking, why are you posting so much? You're going to get banned and all that. It's bigger than all of that. It's, it's much bigger than all of that. I, I still do my comedy. I still post here and there. It's, it just feels wrong right now to do that. Um, Unless it is related to the issues in Iran, I, I can make it comical. Uh, we all need we all need to laugh. Uh, we all need to uh, be united. We have the power. We the people have the power. Make sure you subscribe. Give me a super like. Uh, I love you guys for tuning in. This has been episode eighty seven. Um, enjoy November. I'm going to grow this out. No shave November. Uh, we'll see how far I can get with it. Uh, love you guys. And I'll see you on the next episode.